Welcome to the Get Published Podcast, sponsored by Birdie Consulting Group. To get more information about our coaching, publishing, executive ghostwriting, and podcast production services, go to getpublishedpodcast.com. Hello, I am Paul Birdie, and thank you for joining us for another episode of the Get Published Podcast, where we help authors get published with a proven system that works. Today, we're being joined by Aaron Coots, author of Amythia. Aaron, welcome to the show. Thank you, Paul. It's great to be with you for my first ever interview of the Amythia Book Tour. Well, I am absolutely thrilled to have you, and in full transparency with our audience, Aaron is one of my clients, and uh, we have had the privilege to help him with his book, which uh, I believe this project has been in development for how many years now, Aaron? Uh, it's been over 10 years, uh, on and off. Um, I've had to work part-time, uh, but yeah, we finally finally got the book, the first book out, Rise of Winter, this week, and we got the hard copy, so I'm very excited. Excellent. So we're going to start to delve into the questions. Are you ready to get started, Aaron? I sure am. All right. Question number one. What is the one piece of advice that you would give to a first-time author who is currently writing their book? Okay. Um, I'm sure I'm sure the writing process is different for everyone, but um, if I had to narrow it down, I'd say patience, perseverance, and self-belief are the three things that I would I would uh, suggest are really important to being published. Um, sort of writing a good book, it's taken me a long time. Um, you have several setbacks along the way. It's not for me. It's been um, up and down. I've had a few highs and lows, but uh, yeah, I, I just definitely say that. Um, you know, a life without dreams is like a, a hawk without wings. If you want to be a writer, you go ahead and do it. Don't let anyone or anything stop you. That's that's what I would probably say to any aspiring writers out there. And what do you feel is the hardest part about getting published? Uh, I would just I would say just finding the right publisher that believes in you and believes in your work. Um, that that was probably the most difficult aspect of public, being published. Um, also, like the rejections are a part of the process as well. That was another another difficult thing that I had to I had to learn um, when I first started writing our Mickey. I sent out I'd say probably about thirty copies of um, to different publishers in New York. Actually, like the first three chapters of the book, and I think of the thirty um, the thirty chapters that I sent out, I probably got one response, and that was no. So I didn't even hear back from 29 people um, whether they liked it or you know how I could improve it or anything like that. So that was that was a little bit hard on the self-esteem, um, but I think that's just part of it. Um, what I've learnt to do is sort of take that, and uh, when when I didn't hear back from people, I thought, well, obviously it still needs some work. So I sort of reached out to friends who sort of then helped helped me bring clarity to the to the storyline and order to the storyline, and I think that's part of it. You know, it's if you. My books, books sort of evolve over time. So, you know, if, if, they, if, you, if you don't get accepted straight away, then I sort of am very open to ask questions about why it didn't get accepted, listen to people around me, um, and, then, and then just keep improving the plot until you like what you have written. And then, yeah, don't be surprised if you have to rewrite the story uh, five more times than you ever imagined. Well, it was nice. When we connected back in January, too, the book was essentially done. I know you were making a few final touches on it, but a nice thing is we were able to connect. We are able to figure out from our side, and for y'all's side, it was a good fit. And uh, most yeah. importantly, was making that a reality and working on this the yeah. last several months. I mean, it's been an absolute privilege working with you, and most importantly, helping you share your story with the world. Because uh, that, to me, is that's my favorite part, is seeing the finished product and seeing, seeing you guys happy and then getting that product out there for everyone to see. Yeah, no, thank you. I'm so grateful, Paul, to have your support. And just to, to, to find you was a, a real godsend, you know, and I, I feel very fortunate that, um, you know, that we, we've been able to work together and, and to get this out there. It's, um, yeah, it's been, it's been terrific. Well, and speaking of getting it out there, I would like to talk about marketing and uh, some of the things that you have planned coming up. So if you, if you could please share a marketing strategy that uh, you're going to use in your book launch that you feel is going to work well? Because we've done the online side of it, we've done the launch, you guys are able to come yep. bestseller in multiple categories, but tell us some of the things that you're planning. And I remember one of the key things that you are telling me about was that you guys are doing the equivalent of a Comic-Con type of event over in Australia. 
Yeah, that's that's right. We've got a, a big um, launch at the convention centre in Brisbane. Um, we're, we're actually, I've got another one of your authors actually, in, who's in your stable of authors, Cliff Simon. Um, he's, he's got a brilliant book out, and he's coming out here actually as well. So we're gonna we're gonna sit uh, on stage and just do a question and answer session. Um, yeah, there's some interesting names up there. John Travolta is going to be um, up at Brisbane as well, and everyone gets dressed up, so it should be a really fun sort of exciting time. Yeah, really good atmosphere, a bit of a party atmosphere. So I'm looking forward just to meeting all the all the quirky characters and, and having a great time up there. Well, and I think that's one of the best things too, where you can turn it into not just you know, a book sign in or a book read in when you can turn it into like a book launch party and to be able to do that at a convention like this and to have a Q and a, I mean, those, those type of things are huge. And I'm sure some people, some of our audiences know Cliff Simon was actually, um, in Stargate. So to have him part of this and supporting the Amithia project, it's, it's really awesome. Yeah, that's right. He's a, he's a really big name in the science, in the sci-fi community starting Stargate. I think, I think his uh, the episodes have gone to over 200 countries around the world. So, actually, it's it's funny. I was, I was sitting in a taxi cab, oh, like a, a cab, the other day, and I was, I was speaking with the driver, and he does some um, some work just taking people around Brisbane, and and he asked me what I did, and I said, oh, I'm just about to release my first book, and he and he said, oh, what is it? And I said, oh, it's science fiction. I'm a little bit quirky. And he said, no, I love science fiction. He said, uh, actually, I've got a job to drive a very important client around. Um, in, uh, in, in next month and I said oh okay who's that and he goes oh have you heard of Stargate and I was like yeah I have actually and he said well I have the opportunity to drive either Lisa Marie Presley who was married to Michael Jackson or Cliff Simon around and I was going to make far more money like driving um, Lisa Marie Presley around but I said oh, there's only one choice for me it's, I've got to take Bale around you know he was so excited yeah. and then I was telling him <laughs> about the book and he's going to come along to the launch now so he's got a couple of friends that really love Cliff as well so yeah it's um I mean, that's part of it, you know, networking and talking with people and just letting them know what you're doing. Like, I find that a little bit hard because um, sometimes, you know, self-promoting is not my thing, but it's, it's been really good just networking with people and talking and then you meet people and then that can kind of lead to something else. And, yeah, away we go. So we've got a few more, few more guests at the Brisbane uh, Convention Centre when we go up there now. <laughs> well, another cool thing, too, with Cliff Simon and Lee, with um, Priscilla Presley as well is the fact that this movie is being... You guys have already announced this, so I'm just going to go ahead and mention this on the show. Is that um, Amethia is most likely going to be turned into a movie? And you guys have already had some videos with several of the um, prospective actors already talking about the series. Um, I think that's really exciting. You had Bruce Logan as well talking about it. I mean, that's a pretty huge deal. Yeah, it's, it's been an amazing journey. Um, Cliff's, Cliff's really interested in the in the script. Um, that's why he's come on board too. So. You know, I feel very blessed that he's coming out all this way to Australia just to help promote promote the book and with the with the, the hope that you know it might become a movie. Um, but yeah, we've we've got some we've been blessed to attract the the uh, you know some really good talented people. We've got um, Bruce Logan, like you said, he's a, a multi award winning Emmy director. Um, for people that don't know him, he sort of worked on Star Wars and he worked on Tron and Two Thousand and One Space Odyssey. Um, he's just a he's a titan in the industry. Um, and yeah, it's been it's been great. He called me one day, and I was I was so shocked. And he was just talking to me and just giving me a few pointers on how I could improve the storyline. And uh, it was it was terrific. You know, he's talking about George Lucas, and I was I was just in awe because growing up for me, Star Wars was the thing that really got me interested in sort of wanting to write sci-fi. So yeah, it was kind of it was great to have him on the line. And he sort of said initially in our myth here, he said, oh, you know the pl the um, the setting where you've got it, you've got a it's it's a bit too idyllic. I want you to do a few things that'll make it a bit more dramatic. And uh, he was the guy in Star Wars. His job was to blow up the Death Star. So immediately I thought, okay, that's what I've got to do. I've got to blow up the village and blow up, you know, throw a few laser fires in there and a few gun battles. So he liked it much better after I spoke with him and I and I adjusted that. So, but um, no, it's 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 been a privilege to have him on board and advising us and and a few other. There's another writer called Steve Finlay. He's a a multi-award winning uh, writer over in LA. He's he's been collaborating with us on the project as well. So, yeah, it's kind of getting exciting. It's um, I'm very fortunate to have attracted their attention. Well, I think it's one of the, one of the best things too when you can turn your book potentially into a movie. Not only that, to movie series. Because how many books do you feel that you're going to end up be able to develop with this Amethia series? Oh, at the moment the the plan is six. So, um, yep. most I've got the I've got. Books two and three are pretty much ready to go. 
Um, I've just got to finalise a few things, and then after that we've we've got the got the outline. So we'll keep working on that until it's complete. But yeah, that's that's the the plan for the moment, which is pretty exciting. Well, and the cool thing is, once you get done with the first book, it's amazing how everything else just tends to fall in line with the next books in the series. Yeah, I hope so, I hope so Paul. We'll, we'll see what happens. Um, <laughs> I'm optimistic, but uh, you'll see, we'll see how it goes. Anyway, you, you're probably more of an expert on that sort of stuff than I am. But yeah, just to, just to have the book out there, Paul, it's um, it's been a lot of hard work, and and uh, it, it's been worthwhile. You know, nothing. I think. Um, so authors listening out there, my, my advice would be, you know, never give up and just keep going because I had several moments where I thought, oh, I don't know if this is ever going to happen. Like I really, at times, even thought, you know, I'm going to, I'm, I'm in the wrong career. I should give up because I had no interest for a while and then it just wasn't working and I had people saying, look, it needs a bit of work. But if you, if you sort of persevere, and that's what I'm saying at the opening is if you persevere and you have patience and you really work hard, anything's possible. You know, you can do it. If I can do it, I'm sure... You know, that all your authors out there listening can do it as well. Because I'm not, you know, I'm no Stephen King. I just, I just apply myself and work hard, and uh, yes, finally it's starting to get the results. So I'm really pleased. Excellent. Well, speaking of books, I'd like to know what is your favourite book, and what was the number one thing that you learned from it? Oh boy, that's a hard, a hard question, Paul. So many good books. Um, I mean, I love, I love, I love Mark Twain. Um, I love. Uh, Annie Prue, who wrote The Shipping News. Uh, Charles Dickens is another one of my favourites. But um, if I had to put, pick one book, I would say definitely it's um, June by Frank Herbert. Um, mm-hmm. it's, yeah, it's just a, a, fa- a fabulous um, science fiction about a, uh, you know, a distant empire. Um, but I, I just remember as a, as a child, you know, doing my homework and, you know, you'd have a little time for fun or play and I could pick that book up and when I would read it, you know, I suddenly I'd just be transported from the earth and I'd be on the trip of a lifetime with Paul Atreides, you know, off in, off in space. And it sort of, I think that that was the first time I felt like, you know, you're only limited by your imagination. And I think that's why I really love that book by Frank Herbert. He was a genius, I think. And uh, yeah, I still, I still like to read it every now and again. I've got um, a couple of, couple of copies upstairs and I pull it out when I'm, when I'm feeling uninspired and that gets me, gets me writing again. If I remember right, it was the Har- Harkonnen and the Atreides. Is that right? Yeah, that's it. That's it. So Paul Atreides, yeah. um, and then they, they had had sort of like houses, and there was giant, um, giant worms that they rode through the uh, yeah. through the sand dunes. Yeah, they'd sort of hook a ride, and it just it blew my mind with the creativity. It was um, yeah, quite special. So yeah, you got to run fast, otherwise you get eaten by those giant sand worms. Well, and a nice thing, too, is that's another great example of a book that became a movie. And the funny thing is, then it became a video game. And I actually played the video game in the 1990s. So it was one of those where you got to build your own little... You got to build your little alliance up and build your base and all that. And you'd have the sand dunes and all the worms and all that. It was such a crazy thing, but it was such a great way to Uh connect with um, that full immersion. So from the book... To the movie, of course, Sting was in the movie, so you know it's pretty awesome. Yeah, and then you have the yeah, video was, game as well, so it's crazy how that all connects. Yeah, that's right. I, I didn't play the video game, but I, I saw the movie several times, and uh, I loved it. And I'm actually really excited because a new Junior movie is coming. Actually, yep. it's uh, I think it's due, due to be released in December 2020, um, and the film stars an ensemble cast including um, Jason Malmoa, who I really like. He was oh yeah, he's, he's quite a big name in Australia. <laughs> Yeah, so I can't wait to see the second adaption. I think the first film, they, they had a few budget restraints, so this one I, I'm hoping is going to be terrific as well. Excellent. And for our final question, Aaron, what is your favourite quote and why? Oh, that was, that was, that's a tough question. Um, I actually, my favourite quote actually isn't by an author. It's by a, an American president, Theodore Roosevelt. And he gave, it, he gave a speech called The Man in the Arena Speech in Paris in 1910. And I picked this out because I think it's really relevant to authors and writers. It's, it's not like a very, it's not a straight road when you're trying to publish a book. But um, for those, I've, I'm sort of paraphrasing a little bit, but for those who don't know it, it's, it says, it is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the person who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement and who at the worst, if he fails, 
at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. And the reason I love that so much is, you know, I think writing's not easy. If you go into writing, not everyone's going to like your work. You're going to have your moments where you will feel like giving up or, you know, and, and you will have your critics. Um, for me, sometimes I can be my biggest critic as well, that self-doubt and that negative self-talk. Um, it's a battle. But um, I think authors must have courage. You must be brave. And it's really not about winning or losing. It's about showing up and being seen in the arena. So, um, yeah, I hope, I hope that advice helps, helps some uh, aspiring authors out there anyway. I think that is great advice. Well, Aaron, I want to thank you for being a guest on the show. What is the best way for people to find you online? Uh, okay, we've got a website address. It's www.almythia.com. So that's A for Alpha, L for Lima, Myth as in Story, E for Echo, A for Alpha, Almythia. Uh, we also have a, an Almythia group on Facebook that people can join. Um, it'd be great if, if people wanted to join up to that so they can follow what's happening. And you can also follow us on Instagram and Twitter as well. Excellent. And what are the um, what is the Instagram and Twitter accounts? Uh, the Instagram and Twitter accounts are... Um, I've forgotten, to be honest. <laughs> I should know. Um, I, I, yeah, I can't remember, actually. Sorry, Paul. That's a, that's, I no, no, no. That, but, um, Easy solution. Just go in the search bar and type in Amithia, and you will be good to that's go. That's it. That's how I find it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> my wife's my wife's the brains of the outfit. She does all that, so she's um she's terrific. So uh, yeah, I, I get a bit lost sometimes with with all that, but um she's terrific at it. Well, Aaron, I want to thank you once again for being on the show today, and I wish you all the best in your author journey ahead. Yeah, thank you so much, Paul. I really appreciate being on the show, and thanks so much for your time. Thanks again for joining us today. To learn more about how you can be featured in our brand new Get Published business book, go to getpublishedpodcast.com.